January January 25th, and it's 7.48 at this time. Uh, thanks for showing up at my meeting via web. Um, we have a guest today. It's going to be Miss Isabella Leia. And um, I just want to know, is Miss Lyons there? Hello? Hello, Ms. Lyons? Mr. Tate? <laughs> Mr. Tate, are you there? I'm here. Okay, Mr. Tate, I'm not able to tell when um somebody's raising their hand. So can you please assist me with that? Okay, if I see them, I'll let you know. Okay, and also I was wondering, I see that the community board is online, but I'm asking for Ms. Lyons and I'm not hearing a response. Okay, and um, is our special guest online with us? Hello, Ms. Leia, Isabella Leia. Hello, hey, uh, I'm Hello. actually, uh, this is not Isabella, obviously, but uh, my name is Alvin Dan. Uh, I'm with the Crown Heights Care Collective. And uh, I'm here on behalf of Isabella uh, with the New York Civil Liberties Union. Oh, okay. So she's not here. And what's your name, sir? Uh, Alvin. Alvin? Mm -hmm. Alvin what, sir? Oh, Alvin Dan. Last name Dan. Mm -hmm. D-A-N? D-A-N, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Welcome, sir, to Community Board 17 com Public Safety Meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to welcome everybody to my meeting tonight. And again, it's now 7.50. Um, can somebody please help me with, I'm going to do the roll call and see who's here and who's not. And um, let's start with. Uh, Mr. Tate. Mr. Tate, good. can you tell us about yourself? Okay. Good evening. This is George Tate, board member and committee member. Thank you, Mr. Tate. Next person is Ms. Bennett. Good evening, Adele Bennett, committee member. Thanks for showing up, Ms. Bennett. Thank you very much. Next person I see here, it says Alvin. Is there an Alvin? Um, Hello? That's, I'm, I'm uh, on behalf of uh, Isabel. Oh, you're the person in talk with uh, Isabel, the same person. That's Alvin Dan, right? right? Alvin Dan from Civil mm -hmm. Liberties Unit Union, mm -hmm. right? Welcome, right. Mr. Dan. Thanks so much. Thank you, um, Detective Skinner. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Detective Skinner, and Erica. Br Everick Brown. Everick Brown, member of Sanitation Committee. Everick Brown, thank you. And you're now visiting us at Public Safety. Thanks for coming. Uh, I've been here before. I'm not visiting. <laughs> oh, thank you for letting me know. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, and Ms. Monica McCain Brown. Good evening, everyone. Monica McCain Brown, committee member. Next person, Ms. Vanessa Quinshi. Vanessa Quashi. Vanessa Quashi, committee member. Thanks for coming, Ms. Quashi. Um, Ms. Lewis. Joanne Lewis, committee member. Thank you, Ms. Lewis, for coming. Um, Judith Arons. Judith Aaron's committee member. 
welcome, Miss Ahrens. Um, I see somebody here, but it's just a number, so I don't know. Invited guests, <laughs> visiting guests. The number starts with 917. What's your name? That's what probably is it? me, Miss Miss Welch. Miss Welch? Who is this? Who is this? Miss Reddock. Miss Reddock. Oh, hi, Miss Reddock. Thanks for coming by. You're welcome. And Cordis? Yes, good evening. I, my name is Melnia Cordes. I'm an attorney in the community on East 53rd Street. Uh, this is my first time joining a community board meeting. So, evening. I'm excited to see what's in store. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for showing up. Um, we also have Ms. Uh, Brunson. Ms. Brunson? Hello, Miss Michelle Brunson. Hello, Miss Brunson. Hello. Okay, we're going to start our meeting. Um, Miss. You didn't call me. Hello. Oh, which one? Which was which person? I didn't see. Okay, this is Kathy oh. LaRue, committee member. Okay, thank you for coming. Kathy LaRue. You're welcome. I didn't see it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're gonna start the meeting. And um I'll have you know that last month we had uh, excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, before you get started, I know Ms. Lyons had in the chat asking if we could hear her. So I think she's trying to join in again. She logged out. I don't know if she came back in yet, but uh, I guess she, she must have been having problem with her. Oh, that's why she couldn't answer? Yes, because she put it in the chat. So I just texted her to let her know that oh, we, we could okay. hear her. So, so we really uh, can't start the meeting until when so, she comes in for real for real. That's to my question. I don't know if it's been recorded or not. Oh, well, um, we'll wait till when she could get back in because it's, it's there that she's in for where I see it. So we'll wait. Okay. She just put back in the chat. I'm back, but you still, you are still can't hear me. You can start the meeting. It's been recorded. So I can go ahead. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tate, for giving You're me welcome. that that site that I don't have. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start our community board meeting uh, for public safety. Um, last month we had a meeting, and we had invited we had invited uh, Detective Skinner. We had invited Detective Skinner, and he came and gave us an end of end of year synopsis of what has been going on, with statistical data that was important for our meeting, in our community. But since then, we have had another shooting, from what I understand, from um from the precinct that somebody was was actually shot and it was a fatality. And um, Detective Skinner fatality since then. Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. I didn't hear that part. No, have we had last time when you had came, mm -hmm. you had gave us a synopsis of what happened. Yes, of what no, happened. Yeah, there's a person of interest that they uh that they have for that for that shooting. There's a person of interest that they have um that they're looking at. For the last time when you you had visited us, that was the it happened that same day, I think. Yes. Uh so you have somebody of interest, what they're arrested or they No, they're not arrested yet. For they're, they're not arrested yet. They're they're still working on it, but it's a person of interest that they have for it. Okay, but since then, have we had any other 
shootings or any other yeah so crimes that have I, been I don't know i don't know if you want me going to like a, just a, a little bit brief of the uh the 20 day period which is basically how we call it for a month i don't know if you want me to give you a quick okay please all right um good evening everyone i'm detective scan from the seven community Pre um community affairs office i'm sorry um just gonna give you a quick briefing on what we have for the 28 day period uh with the crime stats that we have so year to date we actually have four shootings um two resulted in homicides the last shooting that we had was two sundays ago um it was a 70 year old the victim was a 70 year old uh male that uh he actually knew one of the people that actually came in and actually tried to rob him um later on that night um one of the people that shot him um actually was in connection with that was arrested so they are actually in connection as far as uh with that shooting the person that actually did it uh, they were apprehended in another precinct um as far as i would say assaults grand larcenies and um stolen automobiles we're up in those <clears throat> i would say compared to last year we're up one percent in all those categories um and assaults were up 37 percent grand larceny is 16 percent and uh stolen automobiles which jla's is uh we're actually down i'm sorry 35 percent um so far year to date we have made a 10 gun arrest and nine firearms recovered. Um, one thing that we're, what we're starting to see, just to switch gears back to the robbery patterns, is we're having a robbery pattern from Church Avenue to Linden Boulevard, from East 53rd Street to East 43rd Street. So that big I guess rectangle or that corridor, which that would be considered sector David and a little bit of sector Charlie. We have taken five robberies so far, and they've been targeting uh, females ages of 40s to 50s in that uh, age range. And the times that they're doing it is usually the times that people are going to work, um, like around anywhere between five o'clock to nine o'clock. Um, and it's what, what, what they have been doing. We don't know yet if it's a group that's doing this or if it's just isolated, um, individuals is doing this. And what they're doing is that they see, um, a lady walking by herself. And they would have the approach, um, with a box cutter and tell the victim, give me your bag. And they would either, the victim would either give up the bag or they would say, give me a phone. And the victim would give up the phone um, and they would run away. Or they're actually snatching the entire purse and then running away. So that's something please be on the lookout for and please spread the word on that. Uh, what we did to actually try to combat that is we actually beefed up patrols in that area during that time um, to try to see if we can apprehend uh, either the individual or potential a group that is doing this um so, so far we haven't you know seen um we haven't we, like we haven't seen if it you know we, we haven't gotten the, the, the idea yet that it is a group working it could be individuals but with that that's why we're still we're still looking to see what's going on with that um as far as burglaries uh burglaries that's still a hot topic of uh commercial um, areas, um, it's commercial tools, uh, building supplies, stuff like that, copper wires. So again, if you guys see, um, somebody that looks like, uh, they shouldn't be in that area, um, that looks suspicious, you know, don't hesitate to call us, um, especially at nighttime, let's say at a, co a construction site and you don't see like a security guard marking or. You don't see somebody wearing a hard hat or looks like you know they they they're there. Don't hesitate to call us so we can go and investigate because uh, some of these construction sites, these people are uh, going in and stealing um, equipment and these equipment are thousands of dollars. Um, 
So that's something, you know, definitely be on the lookout for. Um, and I think I believe I believe I discussed this the last meeting we had, but mailbox phishing, um, where we had actually apprehended a perpetrator in, in, in regards to that. Um, just last week, there was another perpetrator um, that actually did mailbox uh, mailbox phishing. It's actually on our border, but it's on the seven one seven zero side um, on Rogers. I'm sorry, on Bedford. And um, the individual had the same tools. Um, it's like a mousetrap, like a leather belt, and like a flame thrower to like heat up the glue. And they, I believe it was the seven one unit that saw him doing it. And um, when they tried to apprehend him, he took off um, at high rate of speed. Um, and for some reason, you're seeing that a lot of these individuals, when you when when you run their, their license plates. Uh, it's coming back from the Bronx, so we don't know what the deal is as far as guys from the Bronx are coming to Brooklyn and other areas uh, doing it. But so far, the two that we've seen, the individuals came back. Well, the car's been registered to the Bronx. Um, catalytic converters. I know I spoke to about that last time. That's still a hot topic um, with catalytic converters. Um, as far as like just some tips to prevent some of these things, because with especially with the with the uh, stolen automobiles, what we're what we're seeing is we haven't seen that many here, but I know citywide, as far as like Queens and uh, Long Island, been getting a, a rash of them. Is people been getting their cars stolen at um, gas stations, um, and what people are doing is they're leaving their cars on and they're pumping gas, or what they're doing is. Um, especially like ladies, you have your key fob, right? Um, and the key is inside of the purse of your vehicle. So the vehicle is not locked. And while you come outside and start pumping your gas, they're literally creeping up, hopping in the driver's side and starting the car and taking off at the gas pump. Like mm -hmm. I said, we, we haven't been seeing that here, but it has been something that has been going, you know, been popping up on certain places in Queens and Long Island. So just be on the lookout for that too, because if you if you're you know if you're pumping gas, your car should be off. Period. You shouldn't be pumping, you know, gas with your car on. Try to keep your keys, your wallet on your person. I know sometimes it's hard, um, you know, clothing, attire, or whatever. But try to keep it on your person. God forbid they take your bag. At least you know you have, you know, your wallet and your keys. Um, try to lock the doors as well. Um, when you when you're pumping gas, especially, and I know some people don't like using their credit cards at the booth. Uh, but if you go inside, let's say to to the teller, you know, make sure you, you know a lot of people don't lock their cars, so make make sure it's locked because there also been um, instances where they haven't been taking a car, but they would see, oh shoot, this guy has a bag, let me just open the back door and take his bag or take her bag, and next thing you know they're going. Um, package thefts, that's a, a, another topic, you know, just for some safety tips of that. Um, it's been getting bigger and bigger over the years. So I, I know I know I discussed this last meeting, but I don't want to sound like I'm being a dead horse. It's just, you know, to try to spread the word, um, you know, to try to secure or your 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 belong you're not your belongings, but your your items when when they come. Um, I, I know it could be an inconvenience, but if you tell FedEx or UPS if there's like a, a if they can hold it or if there's like those uh, what do you call it boxes? Like I know in Bedford and Lenox, I know UPS has like those big those big uh, lockers. Um, you know, if it's close by, if it's accessible, or if you trust your neighbors, or if you trust the super. I know some buildings, um, I actually saw, I can't remember where this building is located. Um, but it was up in the 7-1, because I had a detail, and um, I was talking to one of the community affairs cops up there. This building literally has a cage, like the super put up a... Like it's basically like a room for packages underneath, like the uh, like like a stairwell, and they basically put shelves up, and they created this like cage, so all the only people that have access to it are people that live in the building. Um, so people are trying to do things to try to prevent that. Um, as far as vehicles, I know vehicles is always a hot topic. So far for the twenty eight day period. We've told from throughout the entire precinct, we've told, uh, what was the number? What was the number? Sorry. 
we towed 30 vehicles so far. Um, that's still um, ongoing. I know sanitation did an operation, um, I believe, two nights ago around the precinct. They were towing cars. So that, you know, that's basically something that, you know, it's ongoing. We're still trying to stay in a fight with the abandoned vehicles, but, you know, it's something that, unfortunately, you tow five, somebody's going to put back three. You tow ten, you know, so that's something that we're trying to still stay on. Um, I don't have much else. Um, if you guys have any um, kids, for example, that uh, you want to get involved, like ages of like 10 to 15, the YCOs, they have game nights, they have different programs for um, the youth um, to stay engaged. They have arts and craft Saturdays um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the precinct. Um, Officer Galloway runs that, and of course we have um a workout um session that we do as well on Saturdays from nine to eleven. So if you have any kids that's interested, and you guys are interested, and you want to um you know have your kids uh, join up, don't hesitate to come by and um give one of the YCOs a call, or you can give us a call so we can get in contact with the YCOs, and you know can even pitch in the right direction as far as that. But um, if anybody has any questions, I'll take some questions and I'll try to answer them as best of my ability. Detective Skinner, this is Vanessa Kwashi. How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, one day this month on Farragut Road near Troy Avenue, we had a very warm day and we got an introduction to the new dirt bikes. Are we preparing for that for the summer? The new dirt bikes? Yes, the gentlemen were on the on Farragut Road showing off their new Christmas dirt bikes. <laughs> They're all red. Okay. Uh, so they were they were revving up their engines, doing what they normally do, and um, they were going to um, the gas station around okay. the three o'clock uh, time frame. It was a beautiful day. It's like fifty degrees. Um, um, was the dirt bikes had license plates on them or no? Oh, I was um outside. I was inside my home, hearing them okay. enjoying their bikes, looking at them from my camera, so I couldn't see it because okay. they were sitting. One of them was sitting in my driveway. Okay. Um. Look. look again, if it's mm -hmm. an illegal dirt bike, last summer, our precinct alone, you know, we we confiscated two hundred and twenty. So, you know. That's something that if it's illegal and, and, and it's something that, you know, unregistered or whatever the case is, we're still going to combat that. That's something that's not going anywhere. Okay. Just making sure. Because um, Farragut Road is a hot area. And you said Farragut Road and what was the other street? I'm sorry. Okay. They go, they go from Farragut and Utica all the way to Albany. Okay. And the gas station is right on Farragut and I think that's 43rd. 42nd and 43rd. Is that the, is that the um, what do you call the gas station by the path mark? The BP? Yep. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hello, Detective Skinner. This is George Tate. How are you? This is Tate. Yes, I, yeah, my question is, again, uh, I brought this up at the last meeting. It's regarding the, the smoke shops. Yes. Okay, I know there's been, uh, I understand that uh, the city has been raiding a couple of them because uh, many of them are selling marijuana illegally without a license. I was wondering if uh, has that happened in our prison yet or, you know, because I say they, they popping up everywhere. Every time I walk out, I see a new one, <laughs> especially uh, along Nordstrom Avenue. So I was wondering, have they been, and I know you guys, your hands are tied up, not probably because of certain laws, but I was wondering, are you guys preparing for it, or have there been any incidents regarding those illegal, those unlicensed jobs? 
Well, the thing with the unlicensed shops is that we have been doing inspections, um, as well as the New York City sheriffs, um, <laughs> because they're not supposed to be selling marijuana right now. Because what we've been seeing also too with the smoke shops, I believe it will. I believe we touched this on the last meeting, but I'm you know I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate it again because you know a lot of people weren't on it, but some of those smoke shops actually were getting robbed. Um, yes. because people, you know, because obviously people think that, you know, the average citizen think, oh, it's legal to go inside and buy it, but they were getting robbed. And, um, in, in some cases, uh, they actually have been arrests made on the owners of these shops, or actually the people that's operating these shops, because, you know, it was found to be a possession of selling, um, marijuana, uh, because you still can't sell without a license. And some of these places, you know, uh, even firearms were, were recovered. Like I know in the 63rd precinct, they actually recovered uh, two two firearms in one of these smoke shops because it got robbed. Um, and that's the other thing that that you know we're, we're preparing for because, you know, if people are they they know it's mainly like cash business or whatever the case is, you know these these uh these people that that's robbing these places they know it's an easy easy target. Um, as far as right now, the only place that has there's only one licensed smoke shop in the entire five boroughs right now from what uh we've been told and it's in harlem um they still have not came out with anything yet as far as how many people are getting licenses i know they said that everyone is not going to be getting a license but a lot of these stores they turn themselves into smoke shops and open up their smoke shops so i guess when they are given out um again we were doing inspections. They're not supposed to be selling any uh, marijuana because the thing with smoke shops is they can sell tobacco, right? And they can sell whatever vapes, but they can't sell marijuana yet. Um, even even the uh, these like these candies that they have, they can't sell that yet either. Um, so, like I said, they, they they still have not came down with anything to give us guidelines on it as yet. We're still waiting on it. Yes, but my concern is that the yeah the, the crime and they've been getting held off. So what I was uh, what I'm scared is like uh, the perpetrators that they know that these guys are selling without without the license, and so they may be they may not be as prone to call if they, if they get held held off. They're not as, they're not going to be calling the cops. That easily knowing that they're doing something illegal, right? But uh, I'm afraid that if they are there and they're armed, it could be a shootout any time, and a lot of innocent pe uh, people could get hurt. With right. That. So that's yeah. that's the that's the reason why we we do um. That's the reason why we do the inspections for that for that yeah. particular reason, because we know we we, we want to prevent that. Okay, but when you say you do inspections. It's like uh, it's like random inspections, or is this the, do you inspect only when something no, is suspected? No, no, it's random inspections. It's random inspections. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Because the other day the sheriff's actually was in the area too, doing it as well. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Detective. Can anyone else have any questions for the dinner? Yes, I do. Yes, who is it, Miss Bennett? Yes. Go right ahead. I like to go for these smoke shops or weed shops. How far from a school or a place of worship do they have to be? They didn't give us anything on that. They didn't give us anything on that at all. Mm, is there any way you can find out? I can look in to see, um, but they didn't say anything. I honestly. I don't see I don't see them just me looking at it. I don't see them regulating how far of a school or a house of worship because you know cigarettes and alcohol, you know, you can you can buy that at a at a at a at a bodega that's around by a school, you know. So and, and that's legal. So I don't know if you know if they're gonna even gonna put a stipulation on that. I can I can try to find out, but I don't know if they're gonna put a stipulation on that. Yeah, because that could be an enticement for a lot of, especially junior high school kids, them to smoke and weed. We have a problem with them smoking cigarettes, 
God forbid if they start smoking weed. Well, these kids are smoking weed, to be honest with you. I know. I see and it. That's, as, just, that's just the reality of it. I, uh, and it's unfortunate, but it, 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 the reality is that we see it all the time. These kids are actually, uh, you see okay. when these kids are high. I've seen kids in the back of the school, back of the uh, public bus, smoking weed. 14, 15, 13 years old, laughing, giggling like it's a joke. And they're high as a kite. It's shameful. Honestly, the, 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 the only, the only, the best, the best person to probably answer that question, I would probably see maybe uh, business, uh, consumer affairs, to find out where, if it, if it has to be from, or how far from a distance, because like I said, we, we wouldn't even set that rule. That's something that has to come from the state or the city. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Beck. And did anyone else have any questions for that Detective Skinner? Okay. Uh, we're going to go now to our invited guests. Mr. Alvin Dan, can you please introduce yourself and to let them know about the Civil Liberties Union, um, Civilities, Liberties, Civil Liberties. Hey, Mr. hey how's it going, everybody? How you doing? Um, I just had to find a, a quiet spot. I had to leave the building. So um, if you could give me one minute uh, to secure a, a location. Give me one second. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for De Detective Skinner? Since Mr. Dan is trying to look for a quiet spot. See for one, it's gonna grab a thing. For one, where yeah, I should have a bar. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I can have a seat. Thank you. Well, is it okay if I sit outside? Is that alright? I'm sit outside. Yeah, it's okay. I, I just gotta take a meeting. You know? Appreciate you, bro. Okay. Mr. Dan, are Hello? you ready? Yes, I am. Uh, do you hear me? Hello? I could hear you. Okay, great. Um, how you doing? Uh, my name is Alvin Dan. Uh, thank you so very much for having me. Uh, I'm here uh, on the behalf of the New York Civil Liberties Union. Um, uh, I'm with the uh, Crown Heights Care Collective. We organize in uh, Crown Heights, Brooklyn. And we talk to people about um, uh, justice alternatives, food sovereignty, um, and uh, police accountability. Uh, the, the reason for me uh, speaking to you all tonight is um, to talk to you about um, a bill that we're proposing to disband the NYPD Strategic Response Group, uh, which is a militarized unit that the NYPD has uh, launched since 2015 and has been used to uh, target protesters uh, to escalate situations and to escalate violence in uh, of many protest spaces. Uh, Human Rights Watch called them one of the most, um, uh, one of the worst uh, cases of human rights violation in the year 2020 uh, based on their assault in the Bronx in my Haven. Um, a brief history on the SRG, they started off in 2015 as a counterterrorism unit um, with a budget of 13 mil. Uh, and 350 uh, officers, they are now at $90 million a year, uh, and their numbers are increasing. Um, each uniform they have is $2,000, uh, and we're footing the bill. Um, now, uh, in terms of the police that they uh, uh, recruit for the SRG, um, this is a volunteer uh, unit, um, and they're incentivized, um, the officers are incentivized to join the SRG. Um, based on the fact that they'll see a lot more action, um, based on the fact that they get to, uh, they will be allowed to um, exercise any form of uh, brutality against uh, protesters. Um, this has been recorded by the Civil Liberties Union. Um, what they do is document police interactions, bear witness and record evidence. So we have footage uh, and we have pictures depicting the SRG um as a uh, violent aggressors towards people exercising their freedom of speech the main issue that i'm here to talk about is the fact that the nypd 
uh, is, decide, is planning to deploy the SRG uh, to 20 precincts all across the city in what they determined to be high crime areas. Um, uh, it is, uh, from my experience and the experience of thousands of people in New York, uh, particularly black and brown people in the city, um, that deploying the strategic response group, the militarized unit of the NYPD into our neighborhoods is um, not a uh, extension of safety, of public safety, but rather an assault, a direct assault on public safety. Um, the NYPD refused to testify at our city hall uh, hearing this Monday. Um, they refused to show up to uh, testify. Um, and so city council has pushed the meeting towards uh, March 1st. And so what we are asking uh, people in the community, what we are asking mem uh, community members is to, um, to uh, follow the link that um, Sharif uh, has um, received from Isabel from Nike, um, and also to show up to testify on March 1st at City Hall. Um, again, um, I've experienced uh, assaults by the SRG five times um, simply for exercising my freedom of speech uh, during the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor protests where New Yorkers and people around the country were uh, protesting against uh, the police brutality and the systemic issues that basically claim the lives of innocent black and brown people. Um, now we have 3,500 new police officers in our subways and the city is deciding to bring the most militarized unit into our neighborhoods. These are where our kids are going to school. These are where our elders are going to shop. Um, these are where our families are supposed to feel safe. The SRG is not trained to uh, protect us. They're trained to target us. Um, the only time that uh, the SRG has interacted with a civilian outside of a protest um, resulted in the death of a, of a black man who had a mental health issue. Uh, in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, um, where we organized, uh, Sahid Vassal uh, was shot and murdered by the strategic response group um, for holding a, a shower pipe. The community, even the police in that neighborhood, knew of Sahid Vassal, knew that uh, he had a mental health issue, knew that he wasn't a harm or a danger to himself or others, even knew his mother. But um, the SRG came in guns blazing, and now we have um, now they have uh, another black man's life on their hands. Um, uh, I, I encourage and, and I implore uh, members of this community to um, take a chance and take a stand against the SRG. We do not need um, more military in our neighborhoods. What we need is social services. What we need are the libraries that the city decided to invest from to reinvest into the NYPD. What we need is um, mental health clinics. What we need is um, um, social services. Uh, what we need is social workers in our schools, not, um, not the Gestapo. Um, so if for more information, please reach out to Isabel Lea uh, of the New York Civil Liberties Union. Um, you could also reach out to your council member, Sharif, um, who also has uh, a link to their email. Um, the meeting will be on the 1st of March. Um, we hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Okay, where will that meeting be again? Uh, it will be in City Hall um, in, uh, in Manhattan. And you have a number for anyone that's interested to contact you? Uh, say that one more time. You have a phone number? Uh, I do have an at, email address uh, uh, to Isabel, um, which you can contact her directly to uh, be a part of this the testimony or to be a part of um, uh, the phone zap uh, with civil, uh, New York Civil Liberties Union. I could, I could uh, add it to the chat now. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody has any questions? Anyone has any questions? Did I, uh, also, just to make sure everyone heard me as well. Um, Who's speaking? 
Who's have who has any questions, please? Go ahead. Yes. Can you hear me? Jessica? Hello. I'm here. I'm here. I hear you. I just need to know what does he have any statistics in our community about uh, police abuse? Did you hear the question, Mr. Mm -hmm. Alvin? Dan? Did you hear the question, Mr. Dan? Now, what are the statistics in this community, the 6 7, for any police abuse? For some reason, Mr. Dan, I'm not able to hear you. You're mm -hmm. on mute. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Um, yes, uh, if we're talking about the 67th precinct uh, in East yeah. Flatbush, um, if you look up ProPublica or if you go on 50-a.org, you can actually see um, the amount of complaints and the officers um, listed there. For example, um, one sec. Right, so. Yes, in the 67th yeah. precinct. Yeah. In the 67th precinct, there are, sorry? The, the ones that are founded. Yeah, there are 109 officers and complaints. There are 246 complaints and 710 allegations. Um, and so with the, with the department with that track record to then influx that same precinct with um, militarized police officers who have an even worse track record. I mean, the number of false arrests that they've committed. Um, I, I mean, if you want eyewitness accounts, um, I've seen my friends being dragged by their hair. I'm talking about black women and brown women being dragged by their hairs by grown men in uniform with a smile on their face. I have footage and video evidence, and this is just for me. Um, there are several thousand protesters who also have footage and evidence of their own. Um, again, you can also contact New York Civil Liberties Union for those documents um, that we could actually bring up. The issue is that the NYPD is refusing to testify against the evidence that we have. So um, I, I, I question I question the integrity uh, of a department that just decides to not show up when they're being held accountable. Um, when in fact we all have we have the facts we have eyewitness accounts uh, we have lawyers who and journalists who have recorded and documented um, the behavior of the strategic response group since 2015. Um, remember they they were touted as a counterterrorism unit. Name one terrorist that they fought. I'm I'm waiting. Name one jihadist that they put in behind bars. Not one. But instead they have put protesters. I mean, these are people who are as young as 16 years old to as old as uh, people in their 50s and 60s, um, predominantly black and brown people who have been arrested and assaulted by these officers um, without any sort of without any sort of uh, um, reprimand or accountability, you know. Um, I, I really I, I cannot stress enough. Um, the state of affairs in New York City is getting worse. Uh, it's easy to blame the community. It's easy to blame people who are just trying to get by. Um, I think it's also time to question why are officers um, making six figure salaries, like sergeants making six figure salaries when a teacher can barely afford to keep her class um, running? You know, uh, for every uh, one officer makes the salary of three teachers. You know, um, so I, I, again, I, I implore that the community does take action alongside with us. There are, you will not be alone. Uh, you'll be uh, supporting. Uh, you'll be supporting hundreds of communities around the city who have been affected directly by the SRG. You'll be uh, standing with thousands of New Yorkers who've been affected directly by the SRG. Um, and that hearing will take place at City Hall in Manhattan um, on the 1st of March at 9.30 a.m. Uh, for any more details or questions or concerns, um, you can reach out to Isabel Leia of the New York Civil Liberties Union directly. 
Um, and I believe uh, Sharif, uh, your council member, also has their number and their information as well. All right, thank you. Mr. Alvin? Yes. yes, I can. Can you please maybe like put the link in the chat? Yes, yes. And Mr. Tate, can you tell me if it's there? <laughs> It's there? Not here. Well, I'm putting it right now. It's not yeah. there. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. Oh. Yeah. Any, so any other um, further questions for Mr. Dan? Um, anyone has any questions for Mr. Dan, please? Okay, the link on the web the link on website are in the chat right now. Did yeah, you hear me, I Mr. Just Welch? put in the link to the website and uh, yeah. Isabel Leia's uh, email address in the chat. Um, go ahead. Hello. 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 Anyone, anyone else have any questions? Okay. So Mr. Tate is the link in the chat. Oh, oh yeah, you didn't hear me. Yes, um, it's in the oh, chat. Uh, he, he, um, Alvin mentioned that he put it in the air. It's there. And he also um, have an email address uh, for. I think it's for uh, labor. Mm. Yeah, the um, the uh, email address belongs to Isabel Leia, who was uh, originally uh, supposed to show up to this meeting. Um, I, 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 they're the person I represented. They're the, uh, the lawyer that works with the New York Civil Liberties Union, uh, who could, um, give you more information as well as, uh, on how to, uh, join us, uh, uh, during the city hall, uh, council meeting. I, I just have a question also about that, um, the civil liberties union. Um, have you all ever contacted the people with CCRB? Uh, all the information um, you can speak to Isabel with, uh, these information that they that we are uh, basing our facts from uh, are from a trained group of volunteers who work with okay. the New York Civil Liberties Union who were there from 2015, sorry, from 2020 till now recording every single protest that the SRG has deployed, uh, has been deployed to. Uh, most recently, uh, if you, if you want to know, uh, the SRG was dis deployed at a, an abortion clinic defense um, where they attacked the abortion uh, clinic defenders and protected uh, the uh, anti-abortion zealots who, uh, mind you, have a, a criminal record for breaking into uh, abortion clinics while women have been operated on. Um, again, every time that there is a, 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 a civil rights issue, um at the hands of the nypd it's it's not the city that's footing the bill it's not the police that are footing the bill it's you and me you know um we are co-signing uh every single assault you know what i mean um what is their purpose they were called as counterterrorism unit but they've never caught one terrorist instead they flipped the script and started being deployed at uh at protests at any place where citizens decide to get together and speak truth to power. Um, that's not a democracy. Um, and now they're being deployed to our neighbors, uh, in our neighborhood, you know? So no, no longer protest spaces even. Now they're coming into our respective spots, you know, where our, our children are, where our elders are. Uh, and they get full um, uh, discretion in terms of who they get to deem 
a, a danger to um, society or to themselves. Um, mind you, uh, m many of these officers, uh, again, have a, a, a long laundry list of, of false arrests and, um, and physical abuses and, and racial abuses and also sexual harassment abuses. Um, I had a friend of mine over who there stripped naked, who was stripped naked by strategic or, response group officers. One of them. I've had friends um, being dragged by their hair by these same officers. Um, these are the these are the officers that are going to come to your neighborhood, unless the community takes a stand. Um, and you said they're they're planning on having twenty more. They are planning to deploy the strategic response group to twenty precincts all across the city, uh, particularly in what they deem as high crime areas. Uh, it's, 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 I don't think it's a coincidence that these high crime areas happen to have high crime after they've been divested of social services, of housing services, um, and of um, education services, as well as libraries. You know, um, you're taking away the lifeblood of a whole community and replacing it with um, people who are only uh, employed to incarcerate and to brutalize. You know. Um, so uh, I think, um, again, um, the 1st of March is a, would be the opportunity for community members across all the, uh, across the city, especially, uh, in areas where the NYPD are planning to, uh, deploy the SRG. Uh, I think it would be incredible. Uh, I think it would be, um, incredible to have the community get together and make a stand. Uh, we don't need more police. And we don't need more military police in our neighborhoods. We need uh, higher education. Uh, we need libraries. We need better uh, health care services. We need better housing services. We need better social services. We need all the things that the NYPD are not equipped to do. The NYPD aren't uh, made up of social workers. Uh, they're not made up of uh, social scientists. They're not made up of uh, economists. They're not made up of health care advocates. They're made up of people um, who um, get a kick out of kicking us. <laughs> you know? um, so again, uh, the first of March uh, will be the perfect opportunity for us to get together as black and brown people in New York City uh, to take a stand against um, the Gustavo. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, Alvin Dan. Dan. Alvin, I'm sorry, Alvin Dan. Um, anyone on my committee uh, have any questions for him? Uh, Please, Adele? Mr. Tate, let me know if anybody had raised their hand. Uh, no, Adele, I have a question. Ms. Bennett? Bennett? I, I was just giving him a hand, a clapping hand. Oh, thank you. Thanks for <laughs> <much>. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. That was a clap for you, Mr. Um, Dan. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any other, anybody Thank else you. raising their hands to have a question, please, on the committee? Anyone? Okay. Thank you for coming to our meeting, Mr. Dan. Um, Thank you for having this me. Time, I would like to. We do we have do we have quorum? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Mr. Aaron, Judith Aaron. Right? Yes. yes. Yes, go ahead. Um, I didn't have a hand up. Oh, okay, no, because I see says, okay, no problem. Did Miss, did Miss Lyons get join us yet? Miss Lyons? She, 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 she is there, but uh, we okay. can hear her. Do we, have quorum? Do we have quorum? Well, I don't know who are the members and who are not, so I really can't tell. So I'm not who able are the to. members of the committee, I, I, I don't know how many committee members we have. I don't know who, of the people who are present, I don't know how many are committee members. Wow. Miss Lyons, hello, Miss Lyons. 
Okay, um, I was trying to approve the minutes for a December meeting, but at this time, um, not uh, able um, to Ms. establish Wallace. that we have quorum. Ms. Yes. Yes. Um, Ms. Lyons just put in the chat asking, can everyone that is a member please raise a hand? I guess this person will be able to count. Okay, um, okay. So far, I see six, seven, eight, including you. I see eight. I don't know how many members we have. So if if we have less than sixteen committee members, then we have a quorum. Um, hello, Mr. Tate. My hand is not raised up because I wasn't there in December. Oh, uh, Ms. Quasi. So yes. I, I understood that they had sent One, the two, three, list of people. Six, seven, eight. Okay, so with with Ms. Quasi, we have nine. Actually, ten. Ten. Yeah, but I don't see Miss. Um... So, do you know how many? No, members we have. That's what I've been trying to get my hands on the list of members on the committee, and I haven't been able to get that so I could establish what is. Okay. Yeah. According to Ms. Lyons, we don't have a quorum. Okay. So we'll have to table it till next month. So then by next month, we're going to have two to be approved. And by then, I'll find out who is on the committee and who is not. Okay. Um, at this time, I just wanted to put it out there that our public safety committee, we want to do something like a forum. And I've been asking for ideas of what kind of forum you'll like to have for like our end of year collaborative forum. What kind? Should it be just on just public safety only? What do we want to do at the end of year forum? Has anybody come up with any ideas? May I suggest something even before we get to the end of year forum? Sure. Because yeah, we've been had this been a, lot, a rush of fires, not only in Brooklyn, but out over the city. So I was wondering if at the, the next meeting we could have someone fire from the fire department, or even okay. if, even if it's not uh, the meeting, if we could set up something with the fire department so I could have some kind of training regarding uh, fire safety. Okay, we could do that again, but we did that, I think, in the month of uh, in the month of uh, November. We had uh, November. somebody out, and she uh, gave us information on getting free smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors given out free by the, the Red, Red Cross. Cross. Mm -hmm. And we had a phone number in order to get it. It was 
FDNY FDNY Smart S M A R T. Um, if you would like, Mr. Tate, um, we can always request somebody from the fire department to come back again at our next meeting next month. Yeah, because I know uh -huh. in the past, in the past that we have set up set up things that they come if we if we find a location that they could come and uh, give us training. They we include CPR, but it also but the the, the, the emphasize and uh, and they show pictures and uh, mm -hmm. videos of how to prevent fires in your That's house. Because sometimes when you visualize it. It's you know it's a lot easier. Like for, for instance, that we show how a, a curtain behind a radiator could you know catch a fire, and there, there was things like that. They, they, they oh, so you want to, to, to do? You want to do an in? You want in to in person presentation? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but can we have like an in person at a meeting at the same time? What do you think? Well, they, they they could do it virtually, yeah, because they, they could show the video virtually. But you know, oh. whatever the, the training unit decide, if you could talk to them and see what, how they could do it, because uh, I've, I've really seen too, too too many too many fires, and right now, was it this month uh, that thirteen year old or nine year old kid that died on Snyder Avenue, thirteen year old on Snyder Avenue, the nine year old that died in Canarsie. You know, so it's, uh, I, I, I think uh, the community need more training regarding uh, fire safety. It's never too much training when it comes to public safety and fires. So we can always have an, a meeting. I'll find mm -hmm. out if we could have a virtual meeting with instructions on yeah. fire safety, how to drop roll, how not to take an elevator when it's a fire. So I think that's important. So we yeah. definitely would visit that again. Yeah. And also the um, and the importance of not using surge protectors with um right. heaters. Okay. Yeah. So we'll include that again. Because we were we were speaking about this when it was before the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can always speak about it again because it's like really and truly I'm home and all I keep on hearing is the fire engines going by. And I'm like, how come there's so many fire engines? What's going on? But we can definitely invite somebody again from FDNY and um, we'll, we'll uh, ask her if they have any videos or how we can go about it, if it could be a hybrid meeting or what we could do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I will do. Thank you, Mr. Tate for that. Anybody else? Okay. I thank everybody for, oh, I have to ask, <laughs> can somebody please, motion that we end this meeting. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you, Detective Skinner. Thank you, Mr. Alvin Dan for coming to us and taking time, letting us know what's going on in our community. Thank you. Uh, can somebody please make a motion? Make Vanessa Clark, your motions to end the meeting. George, three seconds. Okay, that's the end of this meeting. Thanks everybody for coming. Please. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.